uh, uh, back in uh, 2015, uh, uh, Dr. Rungana and me uh, discussed and decided uh, to write a paper on indigenous issue. And uh, it was uh, our mandatory task actually for fulfilling uh, the requirement of our PhD journey. So uh, ultimately for uh, uh, a year of journey, we, we published a, a paper, peer, peer reviewed paper from uh, University of Manitoba. I think uh, nowadays it has been changed into uh, University of Calgary. So, so, uh, so finally, I uh, we came up with the idea that uh, the title "Indigenous Ways of Knowing in Nepal: Exploring Indigenous Research uh, Procedures in Shamanism." So, be myself, uh, Indra Manirai, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, I'm called Indra Yampu. So from very remote area of uh, east of Nepal. Uh, and then uh, I have been living in Kathmandu for about uh, 20 years and working uh, actually in the university, Tribune University uh, as uh, assistant professor. Okay, uh, can you introduce yourself, Dr. Rungan? Hi, namaste, uh, everyone. Uh, very, very namaste. Good evening. Uh, so uh, my name is Rajkumar Tungana. Uh, so originally, uh, uh, you know, a few hundreds of years ago, we were migrated from the western part of Nepal uh, and uh, uh, currently uh, living in Kathmandu uh, Valley. And uh, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm very uh, pleased uh, to work together with the um, uh, on this project, the indigenous ways of knowing in Nepal. Um, so um, I have been teaching in the Kashmir University as a, um, a visiting faculty uh, since uh, six years. So I will be talking uh, later on. Thank you, Energy. So please go on. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Nungana. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Regina, for providing us this uh, opportunity of uh, sharing our um, Arisha's work, actually. So let me begin now, uh, just uh, mm, the research traditions actually we have been adopting in, in academia. Uh, these uh, are actually uh, have a kind of uh, genesis, okay, in, in Western world. So these uh, colonial research traditions uh, emerged uh, from particular philosophical notions and um, ideas actually from the West, particularly uh, Aristotelian thought uh, uh, was uh, the key basis for uh, developing these uh, post positivistic research traditions. So Aristotle actually came with the idea of uh, syllogism, uh, okay, that, that's, that's uh, deductive reasoning. Uh, uh, he argued actually, um, the reality can be achieved through the logical processes. And then that uh, idea uh, was a uh, 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 form base uh, for René Descartes for developing his philosophical thought, which is Cartesian dualism, and which is the idea of separation of inner world uh, sensation as well as and, and um, uh, the physical world. So uh, René Descartes uh, also believed on reasoning and empirically proven facts. Similarly, these ideas of René Descartes in, in early uh, uh, 17th century uh, was the basis uh, for Sir Isaac Newton uh, for theorizing uh, the scientific ideas actually. So uh, he believed on absolute certainty. So, uh, and uh, realities can be explained through cause and effect relationship and measurement. So these ideas actually uh, uh, were uh, the basis or the foundations for um, uh, European enlightenment, what do we often call this Renaissance or you know, European intellectual movement in 16th century and onward. So, uh, this uh, Renaissance uh, actually uh, uh, 
uh, give rise to a kind of worldviews, which we often call these Western modern worldviews, and that believes uh, actually on ontology of materialism and universality and objectivity as the ways of knowing and uh, value neutral facts. Okay, so these uh, powerful Western modern worldviews actually. Uh, devaluated uh, the indigenous uh, wisdom traditions and also the metaphysical uh, beliefs of supernatural being. That means spirituality uh, that is uh, attached with the nature of indigenous peoples and their local values and worldviews, aesthetic dimension of indigenous peoples and ethics, which were actually neglected or devaluated in, uh, in, in uh, knowledge building processes. Uh, so the kind of uh, injustice uh, against indigenous peoples uh, created uh, uh, with the development and modern uh, or physical science. And then Renesha gave rise, uh, gave rise actually uh, the technological advancement in the world and then this uh, industrial revolution was uh, based on short scientific revolution in, in, in the West. So uh, this uh, capitalistic uh, uh, development, okay, you can see uh, the kind of uh, um, uh, revolution, okay, capitalistic revolution or uh, that is the kind of development focusing on material, end, okay? So, uh, which actually made uh, the nature slave, okay? Uh, focus was given only fulfilling the human needs, ignoring the philosophies of indigenous peoples attached with the nature. So then uh, the kind of uh, uh, ideas, uh, uh, or uh, the notions and uh, the practices of physical world, okay? Or scientific explanations of the physical world that uh, these explanations actually borrowed by Auguste Comte uh, in, in, uh, in society, actually. So uh, uh, the kind of research tradition was developed Okay, uh, focusing on the ways of knowing that is uh, objectivity through surveys and experiments. And also uh, focus was given on hypothetical deductive analysis and generalization of knowledge and rigid and structural processes of uh, uh, research. So these, these uh, mm, uh, very uh, structure and rigid processes of research ignored uh, this uh, very tacit uh, subjective worlds of indigenous knowledge and their worldviews, their beliefs. And these practices sidelined this freedom of emergent knowing in the, in the indigenous world and uh, further uh, other non-positivistic research paradigms developed. For example, this interpretive uh, critical and postmodern paradigms, this interpretive paradigm um, focuses on intersubjective ways, ways of knowing through prolonged engagement in the field uh, or in a particular context, okay? So uh, that uh, paradigm also uh, 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 ignores uh, the, the misleading, okay? I mean that uh, this uh, power has shaped the subjectivities of people. So, the research results may be uh, misleading to, to others. So may uh, it uh, supports to uh, uh, develop the kind of uh, this uh, um, very factual or descriptive uh, uh, um, explanation of uh, this indigenous worlds. So uh, there is uh, again insufficiency or Again, this critical research is uh, focused on exploring or knowing the unjust society and how power mediates uh, the subjective worlds. 
And so this paradigm is also again insufficient in the sense that it ignores the spirituality and promotes arrogance uh, in, in, uh, and among uh, researchers. So postmodernism that focuses on uh, the knowing through arts, through uh, different logics and genres. And again, it promotes narcissism and uh, it has overly emphasized on art, artistic ways of knowing. So these uh, Western paradigms or the research uh, uh, traditions developed uh, in the West or elsewhere in the world, these, these paradigms actually uh, have not uh, provided justice to the indigenous people in one or other ways. So the kind of uh, these research traditions have a, a colonial legacy, and uh, uh, these paradigms have uh, uh, facilitated to, to report or create a descriptive account of uh, the indigenous communities, ignoring their own, own inner world perspectives, their, their cosmologies, we can say. So the kind of uh, unethical, uh, in many cases, uh, culture insensitive resources are there, okay? So the colonizers, uh, uh, <clears throat> colonizers actually have made uh, these indigenous resources in indigenous communities as a source of income, as well as uh, uh, for achieving their degrees. So research actually are exploited from the perspective of indigenous peoples. So the uh, indigenous paradigms actually focuses on uh, the epistemic traditions uh, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, their uh, ways. That means uh, knowing through their worldviews, okay? So uh, the kind of uh, relational knowing, okay? Developing insights in relation to one another uh, and with all that exist in a particular context of indigenous peoples. So knowing through interconnectedness, uh, interconnectedness, okay? Knowing through in in independence between human world, spirit and nature. That is the key concern of knowing uh, the world of indigenous people. So uh, in the context of Nepal, there are uh, officially registered 59 indigenous groups. Uh, they have their own traditions, culture and uh, uh, worldviews and uh, the the uh, words of indigenous peoples can be known through storytelling, saying, metaphors, folk songs, tales, and uh, and so on and so forth. And also knowing through elders and talking uh, circle. So knowing through indigenous arts, mythologies, and rituals, ceremonies, and the important idea is uh, in this paper, we, we are going to discuss about shamanism as a uh, uh, research procedure, okay? So these are, there are uh, actually several ways of knowing uh, in uh, indigenous communities in Nepal, but shamanism is one of the uh, ways of knowing the world. So shamans, uh, we locally say, uh, say uh, chakri, uh, they, they, work as uh, uh, healers, okay? Uh, they are also traditional healers that communicate with ancestral spirit, with mantra, sacred hymns, and also get spiritual insights from the deities and spirits. And uh, uh, with the support of uh, such mediation between uh, the humans and uh, the ancestral spirits, uh, they insist a kind of, uh, uh, worldviews, beliefs and practices, okay, what to do, what can be done in a particular community and what cannot be done. So the kind of uh, uh, indigenous beliefs and practices are uh, guided by uh, shamanic beliefs uh, and worldviews. So, uh, but uh, the researchers uh, in Nepal, particularly, they are failing to recognize such, uh, such indigenous local worldviews. So in this particular context, this paper uh, explores the particular issues, uh, procedures uh, through shamanism and shamanic pra practices, through the beliefs of shamanism and shamanic practices. 
So methodologically, uh, we, uh, we engaged in a particular community and we observed shamanic performances uh, of Bonpo locally we call in Tamang community, which is uh, one of the indigenous communities. So, and then that was followed by uh, informal discussions, dialogue with Buddhist monk, okay, and participatory observation of uh, Tamang family uh, members and informal interviews with uh, Tamang women and uh, the information we collected from such uh, uh, approaches or methods uh, uh, we, we uh, then maintained uh, field notes, memos, transcription, and sorted out the major ideas from the data, okay? And uh, we, we uh, looked uh, at the data from research perspective. I think I, I, I pause here. Uh, Dr. Dongana, please, uh, please uh, uh, go on from here. Over to you, please. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Indra um, This is very, um, you know, uh, the, the, just to continue or uh, reiterate what you have been saying or sharing. Uh, the, first of all, you know, this uh, Samanesium, uh, which is in uh, local language called Jhakri Vidya. Uh, the Vidya is education uh, or the knowledge, wisdom, tradition uh, as such. So it's a jhagri is a um, uh, is a kind of profession. So so this samanism uh, might not hundred percent represent the jhagri Vidya because it is a much broader than uh, what we think as a you know sam samanic you know um, the traditions in general. So. We uh, use this Sankri Vida as a, um, you know, we, we found that this is much more used. And uh, the, the Jagri Vida or Samanese, Samanic traditions, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in fact, actually the, has been used in um, most of the communities in Nepal. Uh, the most of the indigenous communities, uh, for example, in the eastern part of Nepal, there is a majority of the uh, Rai and Limbu uh, community where they also use this uh, Jagri Bidya, uh, the Samanism, Samanic practices. Uh, they similarly, the, the communities living in the central mid hill, uh, the Tamang or the Murmi community, they use very widely use these uh, practices. Similarly, in the western Nepal, the Magars and also the uh, the Brahmins and the uh, Mosta community, the Chhatris, they, they also use um, this uh, Samanic tradition. And also in the Tarai, the, the southern plain of uh, Nepal, uh, where they, and the population like Tharu community, we are the majority, uh, one of them, the largest uh, indigenous community in the, in the southern plain, they also practice this. So, so in general, what I'm saying is this Samanism is, is a tradition uh, which is being used across cultures. So it's not only uh, used in one particular culture and, and not in others. Uh, but while saying that, uh, one of the interesting aspects that we need to um, you know, um, uh, mention that you know, these Samanic traditions, uh, there are different uh, you know, ways of uh, you know, performing the Samanic tradition, but the fundamental approaches uh, are more or less same. So um, this particular uh, study was so the field work was carried uh, uh, in uh, among the Tamang communities uh, in Nepal, uh, and therefore uh, most of the uh, the, the procedures uh, which are very close to the the Murmi Tamang community, uh, whereas uh, uh, the the practices might be a little bit more uh, or less different, uh, uh, but uh, it represents the Nepal's uh, Samanic uh, uh, traditions as such in in our view. Uh, uh, and and the, another important aspect that I really want to share is the um, the. the you know, in addition to uh, this um, Samanism or the Samanic practice traditions, there are a number of other ways of knowing other other practices. For example, the uh, the the Brahmin priests how they perform uh, this their traditional ritual practices. There are certain ways of doing that. Uh, similarly, the counselors, the the uh, Pakils, uh, they are called. They are they have certain ways of counseling the communities. Uh, the, similarly, the Tibetan prince, the Lama, they also perform their traditions using certain uh, perspectives, certain ways. Um, so, 
similarly, there is a community, um, you know, uh, like Tharu communities, there is a practice of this uh, Balmansa uh, where they also perform uh, the Samanic traditions. So, so all in all, they, uh, the, the Nepali communities, the majority of the Nepali communities, the uh, indigenous communities, they perform, they use, uh, and they apply uh, Samanism. But in addition to Samanism, there are so many other ways of knowing that are yet to be uh, adequately explored. So there are a lot of room for you know, uh, exploration. Uh, on the Samanism, let me start with the, uh, this research goal. One of the very interesting aspects what we found is that uh, this, this, uh, you know, all these elements will be discussed, described uh, later on in the, in the presentation. But you know, the starting on this research goal, the one of the very important aspects that uh, we found is that the, the research for healing or the collective prosperity. So, so whenever we call, uh, you know, a different, um, you know, the positivistic or the Western um, um, or the popular, um, you know, research traditions of the, you know, ways of knowing, uh, they, uh, they, they are for, you know, their difference on the, on the goals, right? Mm -hmm. But here is a very clear goal that, you know, it is for the healing of the, the wounds that, that people ha might have got from when they are interacting with humans, nature, and the spirit. So there are a lot of you know, past wounds and the challenges that they have experienced in the past in, the, in their life. Uh, and they, the second aspect is that then, yes, healing is one, but then moving forward, and it provides the, uh, you know, the aim for this research, the, the Samanism as such, is the collective prosperity. So it's for the community. So the knowledge is for the communities, you know, a common good. And a community means definitely it's not only humans. It's very important that you know they, the Samanic traditions look for the common good for their, uh, you know, um, their land, uh, their farm, their forest, uh, and nature. So it's, it's and the and human is only one part of their, you know, uh, the being. The uh, second aspect of this whole um, research is this, uh, in the research uh, procedures. In the research procedure, the, the recitation and tenacity, the belief, values, and faith. Uh, and uh, so, so these, these are the very important aspects of the, of the research uh, traditions. Uh, you know, sir, can you go to uh, previous slide? Uh, one slide up? Yes, yes. So let me just uh, go a little bit deeper into the recitation and tenacity of one of the procedures. Uh, so uh, the Jagri, in the Jagri, the, how they know this, you know, I mean, uh, it's very important uh, uh, that, you know, when they are performing the Jagri, the, the major approach is that they, they practiced, you know, um, uh, you know, using uh, the recitation in a very, you know, important way, useful way to focus self that provides satisfaction for being able to recite many times without disruption. So this recitation is, is one of the, the, reciting the mantras is one of the major way of concentrating themselves and also understanding the, the nature of their own being and also um, the nature of the being of the, of the, um, you know, uh, of the issues that they, they, they have to deal with. Uh, and, um, uh, similarly, the, the uh, one of the interviews that uh, you know that uh, we, we had. So what they say that we believe that the mantras we recite uh, more power provides us more power and peace, and we we acquire. So so through it we uh, acquire the power and and uh, and peace, and through this you know we can promote peace and prosperity in the village in the community. So so the whole purpose of this recitation uh, is that they, uh, and antinacity is that they, they really, uh, you know, use it uh, for the um, benefit of the community that they are living with. And uh, so it's, it's very uh, interesting. And the meditation is, uh, is also an important part of knowing, uh, you know, the interdependency between the human world and the spiritual world. So uh, Dr. Rai just mentioned that this interdependency between the nature uh, and human and the spiritual world is one of the, the most important aspect of indigenous knowledge uh, in our society. 
Uh, so belief, values, faith, and human and a spiritual uh, and a spiritual world. So this is another important aspect of uh, you know knowing in the of the Chakri Vidya. Uh, so in this uh, you know uh, knowledge tradition, uh, it is transferred from senior to junior. Uh, you know very importantly that the senior has to trust um, and also the the uh, the junior and junior uh, also has to gain that through their performance. Uh, so. So here the, the, the belief, uh, value and faith are, um, you know, uh, it's, it's not a blind faith, rather they absorb, they participate, the junior will participate uh, from maybe uh, when they are uh, 10, 11 years of, you know, um, years of age, or sometimes they, they, uh, they are like 16, 17, and then uh, they start participating as a, as a co, uh, you know, um, uh, as a, as a you know helper or the or the junior jangri and gradually they learn and and then when the time comes that okay now you are uh, qualified then the senior jangri will will um, you know um, will award in a way that declare that now you are you are uh, capable and you you can be called yourself jangri and then only they will uh, be uh, you know started performing independently. So this is a kind of the approach of uh, knowledge transformation from one generation to another. And, and it's not happens in one day or one month. It takes uh, at least five to 10 years. In, in some cases, it, it goes more than that, you know, because it, it, uh, when there is a family tradition, this knowledge has been practiced, uh, you know, son and father maybe work uh, you know, together for 10, 15, 20 years. And then when father pass away, then they, they, uh, yeah, the son will take over the role. So, so this is how this uh, tradition has been, uh, you know, sifting uh, and, and transferring from one generation to another. Uh, and and uh, the, the um, you know, initially, you know, because uh, the faith and uh, to, to get this faith and belief and, and uh, values, you know, a transformation of their own values, it takes a lot of time. And for that, the beginning is from the storytelling, listening and sensation. So this is the, the you know, initial stage of knowing uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the communities. Uh, this kind of tradition, particularly the, the Jankri Vidya, the, the Samanic, uh, you know, tradition uh, is, uh, been, is learned from, the, the learning begins from the story, you know, listening listening to the stories, observing that the performances that they, 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 uh, they, you know, their elders or brothers have, have been doing. Uh, so, so it's, uh, you know, uh, this, this happens uh, and then gradually they, they learn, they start believing and then they, they also start, uh, you know, this um, uh, reciting the, the mantras, they learn the mantras from their gurus, their, you know, elders, and then only they can start, you know, recitation and tenacity, and then they become the, the jangri. So, so this is a, a little bit a chronological process as well, uh, which uh, you know um, goes on, uh, you know, uh, together as well. I mean, so so it's, it's happening all the time uh, when there there is a, they are talking about okay now this year there is no uh, crops. So what is what is the problem? There is no uh, enough rain for this year. There is a big landslide there. So, so they discuss about the social issues and then they start linking those social issues with the, you know, the challenges that, that human has created uh, or they, they, they you know, realized and, and start you know, uh, you know, um, facilitating the, 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 the dialogue with the community. And uh, you know, uh, they, uh, they engage in the storytelling, listening, sensation, and from there, they uh, actually, um, you know, lead towards this samanic performance as one of the ways uh, of, uh, you know, helping the society. Uh, so, so this is the process actually. And, and then when uh, when we talk about the, you know, indigenous community, sometimes there is a you know false perception that okay, they they are quite traditional. Not no, that's not the case because they have this uh, the spiritual uh, life world, but they also have the modern life world. They uh, you know, for example, like one of the daughter of my participants, he said that I learned from cooking from uh, the traditional cooking uh, how to cook for the uh, during the samanic performances from my mother uh, but then uh, i uh, i learned uh, how to cook you know modern food uh, by watching youtube 
So, so this is uh, actually, uh, this shows that, you know, the, the indigenous communities are also well aware and, uh, and using the technologies and they're using the modern, uh, you know, the education systems. But uh, keeping uh, their, uh, you know, the core of the, uh, of the knowledge traditions uh, with them. Uh, so um, maybe last slide uh, about the conclusion. Um, uh, the conclusion, uh, in conclusion, what uh, I can say um, is that, you know, the, <clears throat> this uh, Jagri Vidya provides a very useful perspectives of indigenous ways of knowing. Uh, like for ex example, I already said this, you know, beginning from the storytelling, uh, sensation, talking about it, then, then uh, you know, uh, you know, started, starts believing into it. And then, you know, they, they have the faith, they develop faith gradually. And then uh, they start, you know, um, uh, the, the recitation and tenacity and the meditation. Uh, and they, they, they become graduated from, uh, from, the, from the, their, uh, you know, indigenous system. And then they start performing, uh, performing as a, as a, uh, as a, you know, salmon or the jaggery at the community. So, uh, and their uh, role is uh, is not out of the challenge. I think the, the way that they know this uh, this their knowledge uh, has been, uh, you know, constantly being questioned by the modern world. For example, when when they are performing the uh, the salmonic, you know. And the performance. Somebody asks, "Okay, uh, you are talking with somebody. Do you have a mobile phone? How do you talk with them? So where is the network? So uh, so can you just take a picture of that? You know. So there are a lot of you know uh, questions coming up in the in the in the in the uh, you know the current uh, modern context where the the information and technologies are are quite rapidly developing, and therefore the the summons are also uh, you know, uh, facing the challenges to uh, because all the the traditions don't have, you know, um, the uh, very strong, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, the Western, uh, you know, uh, the, the way that you know Western world uh, try to um, prove, uh, you know, for example, you know, okay, I, I communicate with the, with my ancestors, then then uh, people will easily ask, okay. So, uh, so you can you can speak, but why can't I? You know. So these kind of you know um, you know challenges are also there, uh, but they the this has been being practiced and and then transferring to the to the new generation is also important and and difficult uh, choice because now a day is one of the most important thing is the the education is uh, very much uh, you know um, um, universalized. And the, the modern education uh, system has actually delineated the community this uh, you know practices, and uh, therefore there is a less connection that the they, the children can make with their own practices. So that is one of the challenges that we we, we realize from this process, I would say. And the existing uh, you know indigenous way of, ways of knowing can be further expanded, uh, as I as I mentioned. You know, uh, there are so many other different traditions that we have, and uh, probably uh, the 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 studying and the exploring more ways of knowing might uh, will definitely empower the uh, the researchers, particularly the uh, you know uh, they they will gain more confidence on how to uh, engage with the indigenous communities, how to uh, you know add uh, no values in the in the uh, in the knowledge communities where the indigenous communities are facing uh, you know, challenges. So, uh, so this would be very, very, uh, you know, one of the important aspects which are not much uh, you know, uh, explored uh, in our country context. Uh, I think there are some knowledge is available, but I, see, I think that there are a lot to do and there is a huge room for uh, research in this area in, in our country uh, in Nepal. And uh, so this uh, knowing procedures provides, uh, you know, resources to understand how human life world is influenced and interconnected with the spiritual life world in, in indigenous communities. And, and very importantly, just to elaborate on it, uh, you know, uh, so that somebody becomes sick and, and uh, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the indigenous communities, uh, they, and they, there is maybe um, when somebody don't know what are the reasons and what are the, you know, the root causes of those, uh, you know, sickness. 
then uh, the uh, these uh, jangaris, the, the indigenous you know healers, the traditional healers, they they come uh, to on on board and they provide certain uh, meaning of these uh, you know challenges, and and they 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 provide the 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 hope that you know uh, the issues that they have can be resolved. So so I think there are two aspects of it. One very important is that you know through uh, this research, so our primary contribution is that you know the different ways of knowing can be explored and empower uh, and uh, enhance the existing uh, you know knowledge um, practices and particularly the methodological practices that we have. Uh, you know, we have been using uh, today. So uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Uh, and over to Indra sir, if you have any last words, otherwise uh, from my side, uh, that's all. Thank you. Dr. Indra. Uh, 